uh, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, this third session, uh, we're going to uh, talk about the, uh, the universal principles that are embedded in the rights of children, <clears throat> okay, for no other reason that they're a human being. So we started out, the first session was on Christian education, and that's chapter two in this decree, uh, declaration on Christian education. Then we went to uh, the chapter one from the same decree, and that covers human education. Now today we're going to go to the introduction where they laid down the principles. Attached to your handout is the 1948 Declaration on Human Rights by the United Nations. So when the United Nations was formed in 1948 in San Francisco, the first, one of the first things they did was lay out this Declaration of Human Rights. Okay? Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it would be nice if some of those people in the UN today read them, you know, Given the condition of the world today, you would never know that they had a, a declaration on rights. So there you see uh, in the, and I'm, I'm not going to go through that. Uh, I just picked out certain sections that apply to what we're doing. If you go through there, you see it's rooted in nature. It's rooted in the man who he is. So this isn't some Catholic pipe dream, okay, that we're coming up with these principles of education. That even the secular world, an international organization at its beginning, laid out a declaration on human rights, okay? So it's always rooted in the person. It always begins and ends with the person. It is not the pedagogy, it's not uh, books or anything else like that. So let us go through uh, uh, slowly and then I'm gonna go through again, uh, highlight certain points that are in uh, this uh, uh, introduction to Gravissimum Educationis or the Declaration on Christian Education by Vatican Council II. <clears throat> The sacred, uh, the sacred Vatican Council too has considered with care how extremely important education is in the life of man. And again, we say man, that's human nature, right? And how its influence ever grows in the social progress of this age. Indeed, the circumstances of our time have made it easier and at once more urgent to educate young people in what is more, to continue the education of adults. So that you are in continuing ed here when you come on Wednesdays. <clears throat> Men, males and females, are more aware of their own dignity and position. More and more they want to take an active part in social and especially in economic and political life. <clears throat> Enjoying more leisure as they sometimes do Men find that the remarkable development of technology in scientific investigation in the new means of communication offered them an opportunity of attaining more easily their cultural and spiritual inheritance and of fulfilling one another in the closer ties between groups and even between peoples. <clears throat> Consequently, attempts are being made everywhere to promote more education the rights of men to an education, particularly the primary rights of children and parents, are being proclaimed and recognized in public documents like the 1948 Declaration on Human Rights. As the number of pupils rapidly increases, schools are multiplied and expanded far and wide and other educational institutions are established. New experiments are conducted in methods of education and teaching. Mighty attempts are being made to obtain education for all, even though vast numbers of children and young people okay, are still deprived of even rudimentary training. <clears throat> and so many others lack a suitable education in which truth and love are developed together. To fulfill the mandate she has received from her divine founder, Jesus Christ, of proclaiming the mystery of salvation to all men and of restoring all things in Christ, Holy Mother Church must be concerned with the whole of man's life, even the secular part of it insofar as it has a bearing on his heavenly calling. Therefore, she has a role in the progress in development of education. Hence, this sacred synod declares certain fundamental principles of Christian education, especially in schools. These principles will have to be developed 
at greater length by a special post-conciliar commission and applied by Episcopal conferences at the varying local circumstances. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let us pick up uh, down at the bottom there, enjoying more leisure. Okay, so with the advance of technology, people have more free time, and it's about more of their free time is supposed to be out in the backwoods all day long, all night long, okay? There's now opportunities now to explore beyond the immediate circumstances. And then you have the technology and the communications today. EOMs can go worldwide and pick up anything in terms of uh, knowing, getting more knowledge, getting more, uh, finding more about your roots, etc. Uh, you just take a, a simple thing about uh, the many uh, millions of people today because of transportation, they can go over to the Holy Land or they can go to Rome and find out their roots and see their, where, where they came from and stuff like that. Where, you know, a uh, hundred years ago that would be impossible. So we have all these great opportunities, okay, to really expand and grow and develop, okay. Uh, and sometimes you men find that the remarkable development of technology and scientific investigation and the new means of communication offer them an opportunity, okay, of attaining more easily their cultural and spiritual inheritance and of fulfilling one another in the closer ties between groups and even between peoples, okay. So the technology, okay, uh, it's not to be criticized, okay, it's how that's used, right? Uh, and so uh, later on they're going to talk about truth and love, okay? So if you have just truth, okay, there's not a full development of the person because we mentioned, okay, the vocation of man, okay, is to love and to be loved, right? So truth and love always have to go together, okay? God is love, Christ is the truth. So the problem with uh, uh, using TV or the technology as a babysitting tool or as a filling the blank spaces for time, okay, it's not, it's impeding uh, that uh, personal growth and development of the kid by the love, the personal contact, et cetera, okay. That's where you can see a lot of changes uh, have made getting back to the person of the student, okay, as opposed to I have 35 uh, numbers here, right. So you've seen that with the overcrowding in schools, they want to reduce that back so you can get back and get into that personal uh, contact with, uh, with the student, okay? And that's the love portion, not just the truth. We're not just, again, we're not just having facts and figures poured into us, spit them back on a test and then you're all done, okay? It has to be truth, okay, animated by love, okay? But love has to be sustained by truth. So truth and love can never be separated. And that's the heart and soul of education. Consequently, attempts are being made everywhere to promote more education. The rights of men to an education, okay? That's a fundamental right. And it's, again, the secular document uh, declares that also. Particularly the primary rights of children and parents. I remember the, the child now is the one who has the rights, okay? The parents have a duties and obligation and from that comes their rights, okay? So parental rights come from their duties and obligations where the child's right is innate in his being, okay? So you make sure you're clear on that. Okay, because you can't have parents usurping uh, or ignoring the rights of the child. Okay. <clears throat> uh, being proclaimed and recognized in public documents. Okay, so it's not only to promote more education, but promote the quality of education. Okay, so it's not just numbers, you know, open up more schools, get 5,000 people in school, but it's also the quality of the education. Okay, which is a complaint of more parents. You listen to how you people talk, okay. Uh, it's always, you know, what is the quality of the education there? What is the quality of the teacher? Do they have a learning environment? Is it safe? Is it moral? Okay. Uh, do they demand uh, uh, students or is it entertainment at that school? So you uh, young people are very, very uh, keen on the quality of education. That is, the, that is your primary concern, and that's true, as opposed to, well, I'm going to go to, uh, you know, Harvey because they can get a degree or whatever the case would be. Mm. All right. As the number of pupils rapidly increases, schools are multiplied and expanded far and wide, uh, and other educational institutions are established. New experiments are conducted in methods of education and in teaching. And you are all familiar with that, 
uh, when I grew up, you, you would memorize and blah, 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 blah. And you people are used to that more open, uh, that education, uh, more aimed at the kid. Most personally, you get out of the rote, okay, and they're paying the penalty for that also, okay. But they're expanding, trying to find what is the best way, okay, in a public school, a public setting, you know, whether it's Christian or private or whatever. It's a public setting away from home, okay. And most of you are really aware of, and you must never lose that sense, okay, that the school, whatever the uh, learning institution, it has to be incompatible with the home, the way you live at home, right? So teachers is a principle for teaching in a formal education outside of the home, and it's called in loco parentis. Those teachers are in the place of the parentis, they don't replace them. They're in place of the parent. So that's where the parent has rights, okay, because of their duties and obligation, okay, to ensure, okay, that the learning environment and the quality of education is there, okay, and that they have a message of education that it develops a whole education because there's a whole, uh, uh, there's a whole person there. So if you see these new methods of education and teaching, you see this whole business of homeschooling that have, uh, popped up, uh, you know, what, 30, 40 years ago. Right, uh, you see the new charter schools. Okay, you see the new private institutions open up here and there. You see new high schools. You see new colleges. Okay, all came in about after the council in about '65s and '70s. Okay, so the you know, particularly in America, the quality of education kind of went down the toilet. Right. And now there's a whole attempt to regroup the quality of that education, of which you are in the front lines. You are the first wave, so to speak. Okay, because you are very, very. Uh, uh, weary of and you're very nosy in the good sense, okay, of what kind of institution, what kind of place, what kind of program is I, am I putting my child into, okay. And so in that sense, you should be commended and never to lose that sense, okay. Yeah. Young people are very good at that, they're very, very good at that. And I simply encourage you to continue that. Okay, so the, uh, many attempts are being made to obtain education for all, even though vast numbers of children and young people still deprived of even ru rudimentary education. And so many others lack a suitable education in which truth and love are developed together. Okay, so that's the whole point of, and you see that as I pointed out a zillion times, okay. You see that when you have your baby comes out of your womb and you have that baby in your arms and again you're built that way to have these round shoulders and to hold that child, okay? You, there's the integration of truth and love, okay? And you, you know, the kissing and the hugging and the telling them and teaching them and don't mind this and you do that and blah, 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 okay? So the mother then is a paradigm for a real whole education and that paradigm Public uh, education or uh, private education, that has to conform to that. That has to conform to that. Because mothers are the paradigm of that education because they see in front of them, in their arms, is a whole human being. And they never treat it partially, okay? Okay, we'll feed you, but we won't give you water. You're going to learn to dry and you know, swallow in your own. It's always a whole person here, yeah. the whole person. Okay. So the little baby starts crying because he bumped his head. You pick it up and you kiss that whole person. See, the whole person is being loved and then is being told the truth. Not to worry. You will live. You're not going to die. Yes, we love you. Blah, blah, blah. So the truth and the love are always there. So if you ever have to uh, uh, refer yourselves to the integration of truth and love into education, then always refer your, uh, yourselves to, to yourself as a mother or to women as mothers. That's the foundation, it's the beginning of education, it's the beginning of formation. And you should never apologize for that. To fulfill the mandate she has to receive from the founder, okay, all men in restoring all things to Christ, Mother Church must be uh, concerned with the whole of man's life. That is why she has a, a, a part in this education business, because she sees the human being as a whole person. And that is her forte. <clears throat> yeah. And even in secular part of it, insofar as it bearing on his heavenly calling. Therefore, she has a role okay, in the progress and development of education. Okay. And again, that whole education. And while we're on the topic here, I'm going to get into it maybe, uh, I don't know when it is, one of these sessions. Okay. You've got to remember that that child that you uh, have, 
have had baptized, okay, at this point in time is a layman. And you have to develop the lay vocation, lay apostolate, and lay spirituality in them from the beginning, okay? Because that's ultimately 98% of all the children in the world, okay, or Catholics in the world, okay, are going to be lay people. So you have to prepare them for that education. I'm going to get into that later on, but I just want to make that note now, okay, that they already have that vocation. You have the vocation to love and to be loved. You're going to be the teachers of the lover, okay, so they become a beloved. But you're also the ones that are going to train them now for their life by beginning with that lay apostolate. So he just had the little kid, you told him to pick up the two little things, you put it here, and he went out thing, and he obeyed. See, that's terrific. That's exactly what you do. That's good training. Okay, because you're going to be living in the world, and to live in the world as a layman, you have to live an excellent life, not be a slob. So you just pointed out this comes on the floor, pick them up and put it in the basket. And the kid did it. That's terrific. It's exactly what we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and hence the sacred synod declares certain fundamental principles of Christian education. And that Christian education is human and baptismal. So the Christian education is a whole education, a human education and a baptismal education. And integrated into that whole person, that whole person, that integration came with baptism. So they're not only called to live a human life with excellence, they're called to live a baptismal life, okay, with excellence. <clears throat> So let me review once again this human education, okay? The child is, first of all, a rational being. Therefore, the three elements of rationality are the mind, the memory, and the imagination. All memory and imagination have to be developed, okay? And that's one of the problems with the technology. They remain passive, not active, okay? And so they have to be that. There's nothing wrong with the, you know, go to watch a movie for, you know, half an hour or something like that. I'm talking about that. That now simply becomes the... the uh, the technology now becomes the quote-unquote teacher. And the kid becomes passive, he's not active. You've got to make him active. That's why you read the stories, okay? You have him speak, you have him uh, memorize, okay, whatever. Okay, then he's a free will being, which means he's got to be habituated. He's got to develop virtues, okay? Uh, as I just said, okay, pick up those crumbs and put them in the basket, okay? And the kid does it. See, that's good training. Yes, no, thank you, please. We're talking, would you shut up? You know, that's that whole kind of uh, uh, teaching them free will. Because they're going to develop habits one way or the other. Don't kid yourself. They're either going to have good habits or bad habits, but they're going to have habits. You determine what kind of habits they're going to have. <laughs> and that's the pain in the neck part of uh, raising kids, is that, is that training part. Okay? But it's crucial in the first five years. That's when a lot of people make mistakes. They kind of blow those first five years off, and they're just a little, a little kid, you know. No, no, that's, that's when they have the great capacity, great capacity to learn and be trained, okay? You don't take, and I don't mean this, I know you, you, we had the business with the egg and, you know, and, and you don't take the old horse and try and train them. It's when it's a young colt, that's when they train them, okay, because they train a bull, okay? And you'd be surprised at the capacities that God has placed in a young child, okay, to learn and to be, uh, and to be habituated. They have a great capacity for that. Okay, a great capacity for that. And that's why there's, those moments have to, be, uh, uh, have to be seized. Okay, So again, it's not only the intellectual virtues, it's also the moral and social virtues that they've got to be trained in. Their conscience has to be formed and informed, not just informed. Okay, So they clearly uh, recognize what is right to do and what is wrong to do. This is good, this is bad. Okay, So they know right from wrong. The conscience is formed. Okay. Uh, I remember uh, there was a certain person who was in her name I won't mention, but the parents came over to visit, and before they, when they get in the house, they take your shoes off, okay? And the grandparents came in, and the little children went, oh, no, you have to take your shoes off. And, it's, and that is absolutely beautiful. That is ab no, serious. It is absolutely beautiful. See, they're very clear, okay? When you come in this house, you take your shoes off, okay? I don't care who you are, grandma, grandfather, pope, you take your shoes off when you come out of my house. No, that's, that's beautiful training. And you see they have that confidence and that ability to go right up, and they're absolutely certain that that's what you do. Absolutely certain. There's no doubt in their mind. They know that because they've been trained to do it themselves. Everyone does it. So I don't care what that old, whole other world that tells you when they don't do it. Well, for them, this is the world, the real world, and this is what you do. You come in the house, you take your shoes off. Great. Okay, uh, and then in the baptismal 
element of the human, okay? Uh, there is basic catechesis, okay? And you begin with your little saints books or whatever it is, and you work your way up. They have to begin to get a, a prayer life. You begin right away, grace at meals or whatever. Uh, prayers going to bed. Prayers getting up in the morning, okay? And then they gradually grow into the liturgical and sacramental life of the church. So for the church, the baptismal life is that grace builds upon nature. That's why you've got to have the human education, or grace doesn't work that well. As well as they have the virtues, that's as well as grace will work, okay? So you just can't be saying, uh, uh, okay, we're going to go to church, okay, and they get uh, a bowl full of Cheerios, and they get balloons in them in the pew, and you know, all that kind of business. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? So that's the whole education, human and, and, and baptismal. Because that's a human being that cut out of your womb, and then he's the child of God. And just remember that child of God, that means he's not your child, baptismally speaking. That you're going to have to give an account uh, to Almighty God for that kid. Okay? And the mothers, who are the great lovers, okay, will have the uh, greatest obligation. The parents, as, as one, working obviously, but in the early years, that's the mother. And the hand who rocks the cradle rules the world, and that is not an exaggeration. Okay, okay so... Uh, uh, that's all I have uh, for now, but I wanted to go a little bit slow. Some of this is, going to be, is, is repetitive, because I think these things have to be repeated so you really get it and you really understand it, okay? Because this is no small matter that I'm sitting here giving you the principles that the church gives, okay? But you're actually going to be raising these children one way or the other. And what we need is good, good uh, healthy human beings, okay, who know their faith and live their faith. And that really literally is going to be up to you. And that's why you're so important. That's why it's so important that uh, you get these things, okay? Uh, and not only get them, but live them. Live according to what the church gives you. Okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.